becoming aware and then rewriting those thoughts of like how what's the opposite of that because the only way you know what the opposite is is to the have have that contrast there's always a story and in a situation that can make you a victim yeah. right and we relate to each other based on these stories like oh yeah i grew up like that too or oh yeah my dad wasn't around oh yeah mine either so we're kind of starting to relate to other people based on these stories so first i think just become aware someone is coming and that person is you Pivot in your confidence, career, and compensation with the 5-Minute Career Hack Podcast every Monday and Thursday. Now get ready for a special interview curated just for you. Welcome back to another 5-Minute Career Hack episode, and today I'm so excited. Y'all know I'm the Mindful Minute girl, and today I have a mindfulness expert in the building with me today. I have Mickey Graham from You Are Magic Media. She is the founder of You Are Magic Media. She's a thought leader, a former corporate trainer, and a creative, a creative. She directs videos, she does all the things. I'm not gonna butcher her bio, but I am gonna welcome her because I'm so excited to have you on with us today. Thank welcome you. to Five Minute Career Hack. Thank you, I'm yes. excited to be here. Listen, we're about to get into it today, and I believe I'm going to be healed. Because the, pre, the pre-conversation oh. was like, okay, so let me just be honest real fast. <laughs> the pre-conversation was so lit that five topics came out of the pre-conversation. We have settled on one today, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to shape it up, uh, what we're going to talk about today. Um, and I've been saying this a lot lately because I hear from clients, I hear from friends, family, of these things that are happening to them. And it's debilitating, and they're disappointed, and they're emotional. They just, it's just, what they, 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 what they did to me. Um, and, a, and the response to that, that I even came in our community and did, and, and I've been saying to people is, and I got this from the compound effect, so it's not my own. Oh, okay, I'm familiar. Um, yeah, so Darren Hardy from mm-hmm. the compound effect, and it was, you have to take 100% responsibility. You are 100% responsible for what happens to you, for, for, I'm sorry, for what you do, for what you don't do, and how you respond mm-hmm. to what happens to you. So today we're talking about victim mentality because I feel that our emotional irregulation stands in the way from the way we respond mm-hmm. to what's happening to us in our environments. And then we move into, well, they should do this for me or they are gonna come save me. And as Alicia Wade always says, no one is coming. No one is coming. But I even say, someone is coming, and that person is you. Mm. You are the one that is coming. So let's talk about vulnerability today, okay? You good with that? I'm very good with that. So I know, you know, being a former corporate trainer, now founder, CEO, you're switching mentalities, mindsets, all that. Your journey includes a lot of overcoming uh, the victim being victimized, right? And and having these expectations of what they should do for you. Walk us through some practical steps that people can take to shift their mindsets from victimhood to empowerment and gratitude. Mm, first of all, I know that's heavy yeah, to start. That's, so that's so a, start where, a, where, it's, where it feels good this. to you. Let's, let's unpack this a little bit. First, I think you just have to become aware mm. that that's a thing. Yeah. Right. And I mean, I'm almost 40 years old and I'm just now realizing like, oh, victimhood is a real thing. Yeah. And I grew up being identified as how people viewed me or what somebody would say. And I became um, like a storyteller of other people's perspectives. Mm -hmm. So I think first you just have to realize that if you're not happy with something, Mm -hmm. you need to just start to think like, okay, how else can I look at this? Yeah. And I think that's first. Yes. If there's something, I'll give you a prime example. So, you know, I'm super grateful for this person in my life. Um, but I've been very challenged by it. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, I could even back all the way up to being a kid, you know, of like my mom and, and start to go down that spiral of our right. stories of how we were raised. Mm-hmm. Everybody on this planet has a story. Mm-hmm. There is not one person, even the person who was, grow, you know, grew up with a, a spoon in their mouth or yeah. silver spoon. We talk about that kind of stuff. There's always a story and, and a situation that can make you a victim. Yeah. Right. And we relate to each other based on these stories like, mm. oh, yeah, I grew up like that, too. Or, oh, yeah, my dad wasn't around. Oh, yeah, mine either. Mm. So we're kind of starting to relate to other people based on these stories. So first, I think you just become aware. Become aware that if there's a situation in your life, there's a way to look at it. Yep. It's either a lesson 
because if something bad has happened into your life and looking at it with gratitude, mm. really, really with gratitude, like, mm -hmm. hey, I'm super grateful, like my daughter's dad. Mm -hmm. We didn't really know each other. I'm just going to put myself out there, yeah, you know, yeah, and it was like, hey, show up as you. Hey, here. look, five in the career. we're hey. just going to keep it real. OK, <laughs> it was like, hey, nice to meet you. I'm going to have your kid. Were we <laughs> okay. expecting that? Not at all. Yeah, OK, and yeah. I carried a lot of shame around that. And mm. I expected this man to fall in love with me and to have a relationship with me and have yeah. this child. Like I was like, society says mm -hmm. we need to be together. And it just wasn't it. So I was a victim to that. I mean, it was, it's been hard yeah. trying to raise a kid together. And, you know, 13 years later, I thank God he has, you know, shown up in the best way that he possibly can. But mm -hmm. I was a victim to being a single mom for years. Mm -hmm. And I wore that like a badge of honor. Like you can't tell me nothing. I'm a single mom. I take care of my kids. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not doing all the crazy child support. I get a little support, but it's not like a I see a lot of men that are out here. We're not going to go down that way too much, <laughs> but they, these men are getting robbed out here with child support. So that I would, yeah. bless any of the men out there taking care of their kids and paying all that child support. But yeah. I was a victim to it. And I love to tell people I was a single mom. Mm -hmm. I loved it. And then one day I woke up and I was like, man, I had a friend mm -hmm. that was getting um, IVF, I think it is, the uh -huh. shot to like start to be able to produce kids. Yep. She'd been trying for years to have mm -hmm. a kid. And here I am complaining about, single about being a single mom. Yeah. And she had to tell me, girl, I'm sick of hearing about that. Yeah. And it hurt. Yeah. Because I was like, but you don't understand how hard it is. She goes, yeah. and I wish I had your situation. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was like, oh. So I loved how you talked about the origin of where your victimhood started and then sharing that personal example. And what I've experienced, um, because I've been on this journey of like self-exploration and self-discovery over the last four years, I've been able to tie back a lot of my behaviors when I was working a corporate job to my upbringing. And not that my mom did a bad job, she did the best with the resources that she had. Mm -hmm. But the way that I was showing up at work and some of the victimhood, some of the trauma bonding, it was because of the way I was, I, the way I learned. Then, to your example, the way you began practicing life, victimhood went there. Michelle Obama always says, you practice for how you want to live. If you don't make up your bed, if you don't practice it, you're not going to be a person that makes up beds. And don't be trifling. She said that. <laughs> just had to add that in there. <laughs> do right. Do right do by right. people. Do right. Just do the right thing. <laughs> um, but I did know that my expectations in the workplace and the way I was showing up, that victim mentality and those other responses to my upbringing were showing up in the workplace. So tell me a little bit about like that, maybe aha moment you had of like, I want to shift right now from victimhood to a 100% responsibility right now. Like what was the thing that happened that kind of got you to that place? I've heard so many different answers, but how long should my resume be? Listen, a one page resume is ideal for candidates with less than 10 years experience. Now, if you have more experience, a two-page resume is absolutely acceptable. There are so many steps to creating a resume story that converts to getting your dream job. Sign up now for 5-Minute Career Hacks Resume Hacking Services and let us help you right now. You even get a one-hour consultation with our team. Yeah, and I will say how you were raised is going to carry over from childhood to teenage to adulthood. Yeah. Right? So it just kind of progresses. <laughs> just because you get older doesn't mean, you know, we get better. Yeah. yeah. We get more wiser, right? Yes. But sometimes some yes. of the habits carry on. Yes. Um, and so for me, I had, you know, I was kind of in the middle of things in my life, and I had gotten a job offer at Oracle. Okay, cool. Oracle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, <laughs> see, there we go. With the response. Okay, Oracle. Yeah, yeah, come yeah. on, no and, surprises here. You know, I used to be ashamed to tell people I had a job because I was like, I'm an entrepreneur. And it's like, no, uh, this Oracle job is paying my bills. Let's just be real. Um, and I remember getting an offer for that job. Mm -hmm. Actually, um, it's really a funny story. I got reached out to on LinkedIn. And before that, I had started to do some sales. I had a lot of success there. I started to train people on how I was doing certain things. And I was able to put trainer on my resume yeah. now. So now yeah. I was like, I'm a trainer too, you know? <laughs> All the things we tell each other. I was feeling good about myself for that one though, OK? No victimhood there. But when I did get reached out to by Oracle, um, I was like, oh my gosh, these people, they're really going to want like, 
I don't have a college degree. Mm -hmm. They're not going to want to hire me. And I went through the whole process. And during one of the interviews, I actually had to create a training and Mm -hmm. do a training for nine people that worked there. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, I have to do this. This is now. intense. Like, yeah. I don't even want to work at this company now. You know, just crazy things. Um, and so during that interview, when we finished, they were like, wow, you're like one of us. I was like, okay. You know, so it was a little nugget. I'm mm-hmm. like, okay. So I got the job. And then I remember we started to train business development reps mm-hmm. who were fresh out of college. Yeah. Right? So every Friday, they're like, it's spirit wear day. Uh, you know, wear your college gear. And I'm like, I'm going to show up in my leopard or what? <laughs> my all black gear. I don't know. I don't have any of that, you know. Um, and so people be like, where'd you go to college? And I'm like, I didn't, you know, I, I, in the streets, I guess, you know, like, uh, um, but in those little hard knocks, there, right, right. I'm just out here learning from other people, you know, um, because your lessons and your blessings come from people, you know? So in these moments, I started to feel like an imposter. I wasn't, you know, I had some, you know, imposter syndrome or I was feeling like a victim mm-hmm. because I'm like, well, I don't have a college degree. These people are going to look at me different when I'm training them. And, and at times I was training some of the high level executives, the VPs, the directors on new initiatives. So I'm training them. And I always thought that they would kind of look at me like that. They don't know if you got a degree or not. And they don't care. They do not. You know, so I was being I was playing the victimhood and I had one of my managers one day such an amazing, amazing manager. I know a lot of people have corporate jobs and they're just getting like hammered by leadership. I've been so blessed. I've had some really amazing leaders. And he said to me one day, like, you do know that we hired you. Like you work here, not based on any degree or any of that stuff, because you showed up in that interview as one of us. Like you were literally supposed to be doing this, you know? And sometimes you've got to go to college to be able to do the certain things, doctors, attorneys, things like that. But sometimes you're born with the gift Mm. and you're born with the skill Mm. And you don't need to have the paper to back it up. Like I was mm. naturally good at, at doing that. And so for me, it was like, oh, yeah, why am I being a victim? Or why do I even tell the story? Why do I tell people I don't have a degree? Yeah. Who cares? Like these Nobody people cares. are not asking me if I have a degree. <laughs> but it was like I wore that like a badge of honor. Like I don't have a degree and I work at Oracle. <laughs> you know, it was just crazy. So, yeah, you know, you start to let things how you were raised or, you know, the programming. And there's so much psychology we could yeah. get into about how we're raised and things that happen, abandonment issues and anxious attachment styles and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. But, you know, if you want to continue to be a victim to certain things and the stories that you got to become aware of the stories that you're telling. Mm. And when you become aware of those, those tapes we play in our hands, the stories, then that's when you start to realize like, okay, I'm not a victim to this. I got Mm. the job at Oracle. I worked there. I made the same money as people who did not have a degree. And it's, you're not a victim. You can't say, walk around like, I don't have a degree. No one cares. Yeah, they don't. (laughs) They don't care. I'm going to add this quick nugget because this is something that hit me recently. And I think me and one of my business partners talked about it, but because the degree thing, like I got, I have a four-year degree, um, and I learned a lot of great Girl, things. Girl, good for you. I but I have it. had the most. I've learned more in actually my experiences in school than I did just learning these concepts. And I'm saying this with love, but I don't remember a lot of the, the <laughs> stuff. Like, like I don't remember yeah, I know, a lot of the right. things. <laughs> I can remember some experiences and draw from them, but I remember more and I see the fruits now of my experience Mm -hmm. versus the degree. So I'm glad you had a boss around you that was able to not only did, you know, share what he shared with you, but that you wanted to do something with it. And something else hit me while you were talking, because I was like, "Uh oh, fresh revelation. So when you were talking about where we got victimhood from, Mm -hmm. it went back to the origin of where you were. But then when you talked about you were born with gifts, skills and talents, that's also the origin as well. So the mm-hmm. same place where you draw draw those or, or go and get evidence of all of your weaknesses, it's the same place where you go and discover your gifts and your talents. And I actually wrote something about that recently because I was a choir director at eight, right? Okay. And the tape that I played in my head all these years, it was a couple of really like probably poor tapes like they were skipping and stuff (laughs) (laughs) but one of the tapes that I played was the reason that I chose to be a choir director was because I was afraid of being on a microphone so it was easier for me to turn my back to the audience and just direct the choirs right Mm. so that was tape one that I had Mm. like I literally wrote a newsletter about it Mm. like it's in my phone because I was like okay I have to like (laughs) like and then the second thing that that I thought that I thought about it with this specific skill that I have was that's actually where I started my leadership, being able to get voices to harmonize. But I was 
I felt bad for the last 20 years because I haven't really directed anymore since I was like 24. Mm -hmm. So what I had thought was from 24 to now that I was sitting down on my gift Oof. because I wasn't directing choirs. Mm. And recently, and now just probably about a year ago, I started saying it out loud more boldly that, oh, I was a choir director. That's actually where I started leadership. And it wasn't because I was scared of the mic. It was because that was me, the origin of me cultivating this gift that I had of getting people to respond to me. Mm. And I haven't sat down on it for the last 20 years because I've still been leading people, places, and things, right? I mean, you're behind the mic right now. <laughs> That and part. I love it. It's, I enjoy it. Oh, yeah. We could go off on a tangent okay. about what had happened, why I thought I, I was bad on the mic. We got problems here. <laughs> that is a, it's trauma. Um, but saying all that to say the same place where you go back to, you know, understand where the victim mentality comes from is, is now, this is what you've helped me with, the mm -hmm. same place mm -hmm. where you can go back and find what, what gifts, skills, that you were given, yes, when you were born, but God chose us before we were born mm. anyway, right? Mm -hmm. So it's there. You just have to have the reflection, like you talked about earlier. You have to have awareness mm -hmm. to go back and, and really understand where that came from. So I, I guess I'm saying thank you because oh. you just helped me. My <laughs> pleasure. Thank you. I think we talked through it, and, you know, like it comes through people, your lessons and your blessings. Absolutely, absolutely. You know? And so yeah. that's the other thing that I, the question that I have for you, and I love to get your insight because I'm sure, and I know this because, I've had several people in my career when I was in corporate America that when I would have those limiting beliefs and mm -hmm. that would come out of my mouth, they would pour into me, but I didn't believe them and I stayed victim. Mm. So you talked about this time where he said what he said and then that gave you confidence. I, I just wanna understand more about like why you believed him and then, now that you don't care, you know you don't need a college degree, like what did that path look like that leads you to now? You are magic media, mm -hmm. and I get to be in spaces with you. <laughs> I, I don't even know if I care about a college degree, but sis, you you like <laughs> knocking Thank it you. out the park, Thank right? You. you got all the confidence, but I think that was a pivotal moment that carried forward into now how you're functioning. So what made you believe them and do something with that? It was the character of that person. Mm. You know, okay. like a lot of people looked up to that person and um, it was just, you, sometimes you just have those people that you respect. And so when they, when they're looking you in the eye and they're mm -hmm. telling you something and they're feeding into you, mm -hmm. it changes your energy. Mm -hmm. It changed my demeanor. Mm -hmm. I could feel a shift literally physically in mm -hmm. my body of like, oh, and if this is somebody I look up to and I admire and I go to for mentorship and they're telling me this. They're not, you know, fluffing anything. They mean it. They're genuine. They're in a leadership role. They're they're literally there to mentor you. So the credibility that this person had, I think, really helped mm. to set the truth within me. Mm. Um, I will say one other thing to what we were just talking about of, like, going back to our origins, right? Mm. We're born perfect. Mm. We are born perfect. And we mm. learn the fears and the doubts. That's a learned thing, you know? So if we're born perfect... When you come right out the womb, you have your first experience of trauma, right? Like you're coming out and you're like, oh, the right. world, you know, it's bright in here and I'm cold and <laughs> what's going on? So you're, you're coming yeah. out the gate into this, you know, we're spiritual beings li mm -hmm. living a human experience. So your first human experience is trauma, mm -hmm. right? But we're born perfect. We're in the womb perfect, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so if we think back to those kind of origins, just wanted to add that little nugget in there. But yeah, so the, he poured into me, that person at work. And then I started to have, I've had so many people all across my life, but if they don't have the skills or maybe the credibility, it's sometimes it's hard to receive the messages, yeah. right? You could have a homeless person on the side of the street that poured, that literally God is talking through them, but you're mm -hmm. not going to listen because you see them as somebody on the side of the street. So yeah. I think for me, it just started to open up more doors of respecting people's messages and perspectives, even if it's a bad thing. So I had, I had women in, in my jobs because I was in a very male dominated industry mm -hmm. and women are just competitive and weird and I don't <laughs> understand it. I'm like, girl, we're on the same team. Let's get there together. Like, what <laughs> right. are we doing right now? Right. <laughs> but I had, I was challenged a lot and I started to realize too, that those were really good feedback things as well. Yeah. Because if I'm triggering something in you, it's a reflection of me. Yeah. 
So if someone's yeah. coming at me in some kind of way, those were also lessons for me that would pour mm. into me like, okay, how could I maybe deliver this message to this person better next time? Yeah. Or what is it that's making them so upset or causing this situation? What did I do wrong? How can I get better? Right. So sometimes it takes that self-reflection too about like the victimhood and, you know, having the people that pour into you and also the people that challenge you and yeah. make you question certain things or trigger you. Those yeah. are also opportunities to to start to grow and kind of learn from them as well. Not just the people you feel like, oh, you're credible. I'm going to respect and listen to you. The people yeah. that are driving you crazy and challenging you, they're just as important. Right. right. Yeah. So and luckily I've, I've had both spectrums of it, but super blessed with good leadership. Good. No, mm -hmm. that's, that makes perfect sense. And <clears throat> you talked a lot about, like you've been, you said it probably two or three times, like lessons, the blessings come from those hard lessons mm -hmm. um, that you learn. And sometimes it is tough to see past the adversity, mm. to even see the lesson sometimes and get to this state of gratitude when you just trained yourself to be a victim, yeah. right? So how do people practice that though, mm. right? Like, cause, okay, I, and I'll use myself as an example of, um, I'll wake up in the morning and I really hate the morning, right? Like I Ooh. thank you God for everything, but in the morning I am like sleepy, I'm drowsy, I don't wanna get up, I'm cold cause my air is on 67. And the first thing that, that can come out of my mouth is, I am so tired, mm. uh, right? <laughs> and then it's an instant, and, and I've trained myself to do this, of it's instant moving into, I am so grateful that I get an opportunity to breathe and do life again today. Mm. Like I, I go into that when I start having those moments, <clears throat> but I do it effortlessly because I've practiced it exactly. for so long. Um, and so when we're facing adversity, whether it's in the workplace and business, there has to be a habit and routine around gratitude mm -hmm. in order for you to be able to make that perspective shift quickly. So you're not a victim to your day, week, month, or whatever your circumstance is. Do you have any specific gratitude? I know you talked about meditation. Mm -hmm. Do you have any specific gratitude practices that you do daily that helps keep this victim mentality tamed and now it's a you know and when it when it happens is now your co-conspirator versus your enemy yeah <laughs> right the level up right <laughs> right um so you have to become so familiar with your unconscious thoughts and the way that you have to do that um it's something i've actually taken from dr joe dispenza mm -hmm. and the his he and his like understanding of neuroscience and all this and you know, neuroscience is a huge thing. If you understand how your brain and your body works, it'll be a lot easier for you to be like, okay, I'm tripping right now. Let's like reframe this. <laughs> right. This is physically not good for my body. Right. You know, so mm. if I'm angry, my stomach's going to be hurting all the time. Like emotions are stored in your body. Right. Um, and so I think if you can wake up first thing in the morning, that first thought, and I'm proud of you because you are doing something that a lot of people have no idea that that's even a possibility. So like pl applaud to you for oh, even you. like, that's a big deal for you to wake up. Um, I'm going to give you a little shout out to your mothering oh, girl. You. Like, let's just, <laughs> we're going to drop the mic on that one because oh, I admire that. You. And that takes a skill. It's just like working out. You have yeah. built the muscle. You became conscious of like, you know, I, I, I just told my, my business partners this the other day. I'm like, man, I've been talking about I'm tired a lot lately. Mm. And I'm like, oh, I realize I'm starting to create a story. I'm tired, y'all. And I'm like, I'm tired, but I'm like, my, I am tired. <laughs> and it's like, girl, because you're rising. You right. are, you're, you're going to another mm. level in your life. Yes. And you're going to learn the lessons of like, I need right. more people. Right? Um, so I think your first step is the minute you wake up in the morning, and there's, there's meditations out there, Dr. Joe Dispenza. I am not going to go out there and rewrite meditations. I'm not going to try to be a meditation coach. I'm going <laughs> to teach you the science, and I'm going to give you the meditation and the tools, and I'm going to help you keep you accountable. That's right. where we're going to draw the line because there's, <laughs> there's tons of people doing it out there. We are just going to leverage their tools. Um, and so the first thing in the morning, he has this meditation, Dr. Joe Dispenza, and he's like, okay, what are the thoughts that you're having? Mm. And I'm like, oh man. And I mean, it, every couple of months, it's a new thought that I become aware of. Right. Right. So you have your surface level thoughts like, oh, I'm tired. Or I wish I could sleep in more. But it's like, you have a purpose and you do have the energy. Mm -hmm. If you would just stop telling yourself you're tired all the time mm -hmm. and be like, I have all the energy and I am blessed with this purpose and this mission that I can go out and impact people and help other people make money too. And, and all of the things that we're able to do based on me rising to the occasion. Mm -hmm. What is my impact? It's how I'm going to show up. 
Yeah. So if I keep telling my team I'm tired, you think they're going to start saying they're tired? Oh, yeah, oh, I'm hearing absolutely. it now, too. And I'm, I'm sick of them saying it, you know? <laughs> and I stop talking about being tired. And they're like, well, you're tired, too. And I'm like, oh, you are right. That devil-ass <laughs> sword. <Look. laughs> Dang, cha-cha, you know? I'm like, oh, I am tired. Okay, you're right. We're gonna... And so this morning, I was like, I have all the energy. You know, I filmed all day yesterday. I was like, I am yeah. so blessed that I get to do what I love to do. Yeah. And I'm, I'm full of energy. So first thing. Become aware of those thoughts. Yeah. I'm talking the second you wake up in the morning, grab your pen and paper, have it on your nightstand. Mm. Don't even give your chance, get out of the bathroom or get out of your bed, go to the bathroom, go to the bath. You know, all the, all the things that you're doing in the morning with get your right routine on autopilot, brushing your teeth, uh, checking social media, cut it. Mm -hmm. Wake up in the morning, sit up and start writing that down. And when mm -hmm. you do that, you start to become aware of so much. Mm -hmm. And then shameless plug, I go and use his meditation. You can sit with yourself for a minute, however you feel like doing it. But his meditation has helped me be like, what are the thoughts? It's a guided meditation. It tells you, mm -hmm. you know, what are the thoughts that you do want to have? Right. I don't want to be tired. I want to tell myself I've got all the energy and like right. I've got a team that can help me and I'm not having to do all the work anymore. So what am I tired for? You right. know, I just hired a creative director. She's amazing. You know what she asked me today? Right. Um, so are you going to still try to do all this editing? I wouldn't even let her do her job. I was like, I'm editing this video, girl. She's like, but you hired me and I'm not doing editing. What are you doing? You know, so I had to learn. I'm learning to let go of control. Yes. I am, I've learned a lot. Um, but yeah, becoming aware and then rewriting those thoughts Re of like, how, what's the opposite of that? Because the only way you know what the opposite is, is to the have, have that contrast. Yeah. So love the contrast, love the challenges, love the negative thoughts because it's natural. We're human. There is not a person on this planet who doesn't have a, a, a thought like that. Yeah. Not a person. You're fine. And if You're they're not, out there, let me nothing's know. Nothing's wrong with you is what she said. Yeah. Okay. okay. We're all a hot mess. We all have those thoughts. Everybody. And if you yeah. don't, you lying. <laughs> you lying. She's like, find a camera. You're lying. We we, you lying out there. Um, but yeah, just become aware of them. Yeah. Figure out how you want to reframe them. Yeah. And then choose to make those new decisions to have those new thoughts. And it's, a, it's just like working out. You can choose to get up and juice. Yeah. You can choose to eat that cheeseburger or get that salad. Sometimes the cheeseburger is like, you know your iron's low. You know? <laughs> uh, but it's a choice. So just, Peer again, pressure. Yeah, become aware. Become yeah. aware. And then, and then you can go from there to start to reprogram the yes. neuropathways in your brain that help you to start to create those new thoughts. And then the yeah. new thoughts create new experiences. New experience lead to new emotions. And then those new emotions start to help you have those better thoughts. Yes. Like, oh, I'm feeling good, so I'm going to keep thinking in these good thoughts yeah um so it's just a cycle but yeah. yeah you have to become aware yes i love that and and one what i what i took away from what you're saying and i hope that the audience hears because sometimes we have these um unrealistic expectations mm -hmm. of the changes that we're going to make so <laughs> you practice i'm 38 years old so for 34 years i practice limiting beliefs and i even did a video the other day and, and said you know, one of my friends would ask me, and we used to talk every day, and he'd be like, how you doing? I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I said that for years. So I'm not going to all, all of a sudden mm -mm. just turn into this, like, person who practices gratitude effortlessly <laughs> and a person who um, believes in herself, you know, with because, right? I am going to only get better because of the way that I build a habit and the way that I'm practicing. Here's that theme again, right? Mm -hmm. So I love your example and the tip around like, here's something you could do. Just put it by your bed. So that's your cue. You got a cue set up for mm -hmm. behavior change right here by your bed. So all you got to do, instead of grabbing the phone. And don't put your notes on your phone. I'm not <laughs> telling you to grab your phone and put your notes in there. You need to write it down. I like that, though. That That's that's what I was taking away. Like, because I have so many, because mm -hmm. what this becomes, and I don't even know if we're still on subject, but what this becomes. <laughs> <laughs> Let it ride, girl. Let it ride. <laughs> what this becomes is, like, I have so many notes that date back to, like, 2017. Mm -hmm. And I have, my brain is always going. So, when I and I have to dump it. or Otherwise, mm -hmm. I'll have a headache and I'm just not even nice anymore because I got so much on my <laughs> mind. And so, I have to dump it here. But once when you're putting something this critical in a cloud of notes, a phone full of notes that you have to sift through to find, like it's not even real for mm -hmm. real. But that writing it down first thing in the morning as a part of your routine, mm -hmm. that's actionable. You do it and you practice it so that it becomes a part of who you are versus expecting yourself to all of a sudden wake up and be Mickey Graham mm -hmm. who meditates for an hour in the morning and writes down her positive thoughts. Mm -hmm. And then you said... Love those negative thoughts. Mm. I was like, I'm about to run around this room real fast. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Let's go. Let's because go. that's, I mean, but that's where we get hung up. That's why I'm glad you said it. That's actually where we get hung up. Oh, yeah. Is dwelling in the negative thoughts oh. or feeling <laughs> or being, judging ourselves because we had the negative thought. Mm -hmm. But everybody has negative thoughts. I think I posted something the other day of like, because I'm a very like happy. Yes, you are. I have a lot of joy. I, this is genuine, I like this is genuine yeah. stuff too. Like, yes. I, and I have been and it's through. It's always like that. I have been through a lot, but yeah. I still have joy. You choose because joy. I choose joy, right? So I've been through a lot, and I still get. I still choose joy. But those negative thoughts. I think I posted. 87% of my mm. 70,000 thoughts are actually positive. So I'm cool with 58,120 of my thoughts being it. positive and the other ones being negative. I'm not mad at myself <laughs> for those thir 12, almost 13,000 no, thoughts that are negative. Yeah. They were mine. I'm human. I'm yeah. normal. You grew. But, you grew. You grew. <laughs> right. Yeah. But back in the day, you know, it was probably about 50-50. Hey. So, <laughs> hey, I, <laughs> I get to reflect and be grateful for yeah. the way that, because it's, but it's showing up and how I, how I'm like walking in the rooms and mm -hmm. like you know I can feel my confidence and my dominion because these practices when I started meditating when I started reflecting mm -hmm. journaling spending time yeah. in healthy community don't miss that healthy community yeah, yeah. not just in community <laughs> <laughs> not toxic community that's another episode <laughs> note to self um but spend, but doing these these positive things that I've intentionally done is actually changed the way that I'm showing up as well, mm -hmm. um, and I don't feel like a victim. And if and when I do get into victim mode, not if when, when yeah. I get into victim mode because I'm not I, this is going to be a forever journey. Then you use the keyword of reframe. Mm -hmm. I know how to reframe it, and I can do it in just a few seconds. I was looking at something. I'm being real vulnerable today. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking at something yesterday and. You know, I, I said something that wasn't positive. <laughs> <laughs> it was on T. I think I saw something on social media and I said something that wasn't positive. It actually came out of my mouth. Mm. And I said, oh my goodness, that was awful. And I immediately changed the language and said like something nicer. And like, you know, kind of just said a quick apology. Like, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to say that. But again, that only comes because it's what I practice, mm. right? Had any any additional thoughts on that before I take us to the final five words? Look, you're human. <laughs> yeah. Be human. Give yeah. yourself some grace. Yeah. It's all good. And you have yeah. to have contrast so that you can understand the opposite side of that. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. It's just a choice. Yeah. I, I'm looking forward to later podcasts of getting more into the neuroscience Oh, part. I know. I was about to geek out. I think before <laughs> you leave here today, I'm going to schedule you to come on so we can do I love that. the I love next that. one. Um, but giving yourself grace mm -hmm. and knowing that you are a human. We're talking about victimhood in the workplace. We talked a little bit about vulnerability, getting lessons. It's all a part of the human experience. That's it. Like, I mean, and then we, we have, we're still breathing. We have tomorrow mm -hmm. to live. So let's do it out loud and boldly. Uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we always on the five minute career hack podcast, ask our guests, to share their final five words. It doesn't have to be a phrase, but it can. But any final five words that you want to share um, with, to, with the audience? Yeah, I don't even think I have five words. Just trust the process. Okay, three is good. And yourself. There we go. Oh! There, I'm alone. There's <laughs> your five words. Okay. Trust the process and, and yourself. yourself. Yes. Yeah. That gut feeling you that get when feeling. you're... It's and, no coincidence. Yep. And it, it, it all, we often meet it, too, when we're about to make a choice, too. Make mm -hmm. that choice of whether or not to get those chips or to get the fruit. <laughs> you know better. <laughs> <laughs> I need to trust myself and yeah. make sure I make the healthy choice for my life. Yeah. I appreciate you so much, Thank Mickey. Thank you for having me. This has been a joy. It's, it's just mm -hmm. been a joy talking to you yeah. today. I've learned much, um, and I look forward to having you on again. Thank More to you. come. Thank you. It's I been love an you. honor. I love yes. you, too. <laughs> Yes. Thank you so much. All right. Take care. I truly hope you enjoyed this episode as much as we enjoyed doing it for you. However, it doesn't have to end there. Come on over to our Facebook group community right now. You're going to get exclusive content that we weren't able to include in this episode as well as past episodes. We've got challenges. We've got research. We've got lives. You name it. All for you in bite-sized chunks so that you can continue this development journey. Go ahead, click the link right now in the description show notes, and we'll see you there.